Hello class. So now let's start with the next topic that is green composite. So now let's see what is green composite. The name composite is telling you that it is the mixture of a material or it is a combination of a material which is producing you a composite, right? So what is composite? So composite is a material which will be developed by combining two or more individual materials which are having or possessing different properties and further when this combined materials form a composite it will be giving you a new property which will be providing you a better characteristics than those other individual materials that were been added in order to make a particular composite okay so what is composite the mixture of two or two or more materials which is going to provide you a, a better material right so it is a combination so what is green here that is you almost in most of the time you have known about this composite but actually what it says that the fiber plus the matrix matrix is going to provide you the composite and that composite is nothing but the fiber the fiber composite matrix matrix okay the fiber composite matrix so when a fiber is combined along with the matrix we get a fiber composite matrix right so now if i am going to use the green material in order to form these composites i call it as a green composite so what is green composite so now how the green comes into the picture so you are going to use something which is um eco friendly or which is environmental friendly right so green composites are nothing but when you are going to combine okay when you are going to combine the biodegradable resins biodegradable resins with that of the natural fibers natural fibers natural fibers you get a green composite a green composite you get a green composite so when you are going to combine the biodegradable resins along with the natural fibers you are going to get a green composite see the biodegradable resin or a matrix is going to provide a bond and helps in transferring the load between the fibers okay whereas the fibers or the natural fibers are used in order to provide a stiffness or a strength to a particular composite or a particular material okay so now why do we need to use these green composite or why the green composites see various other composites are non biodegradables at the same time they do possess some of the ill effects towards the environment as here we are dealing with the green building as well as the concern towards the nature as well as the concern towards the ecosystem we here are always bothered about our mother earth and here the green composites why do we need to use these green composites is that it is a eco friendly it is a biodegradable materials are been utilized where both the materials get decomposed due to the various microbial actions once they are been disposed or dumped in a particular site okay and then further due to the decomposition uh, the chemicals or the products which are been formed is the carbon dioxide and the water that is co2 and water right which will be again taken up or again getting into the plant components okay so again it will be taken up by the plants so hence this becomes a very much useful substance which will not be uh, like a threat to the environment okay so this is why we need to use the green composite instead of any other polymeric composites which are non biodegradable and last for a longer duration when disposed or exposed in the atmosphere now let's see what are the components of 
green composite. So I have already mentioned here what are the components of green composite. The first component is the biodegradable resin which will be your starch or the materials which will be uh, having various which will be extracted from the plants. So those resins are being utilized which are biodegradable and the other one is the natural fiber such as your jute, coir, Okay, so uh, sugarcane, bagash, all those things can be, or uh, the sea cell, all these are your natural fibers. Okay, so now let's see what are the various manufacturing processes. See, the first method is the filament winding. Okay, the first method is the filament winding, next the layup method, risin transfer molding, injection molding, then vacuum bonding and the autoclave bonding, right. So first let's see what is your filament winding. So the filament winding is a process in which the continuous fibers are pulled from a large spout and wound onto a rotating mandrel, okay. So once the sufficient amount of layers or the number of layers have been built up, the wound form is cured and then the mandrel is removed. The parts which are most commonly uh, manufactured using this method is the cylindrical pipes, the drive shafts, etc. Okay, so now let's see the layup method. Okay, layup method. So, the layers of prepreg fabrics are built upon a mould and it can be a unidirectional or a multi-axial form or we can even use chopped strand mats which are multi-directional, okay? And they are being subjected to the consolidating force and then they are being cured, okay? The process can be done either by hands or by the automated layup which decreases the manufacturing time sufficiently. And here the shapes can be created as per the requirement and we do have a very much flexibility when we are going to have the hand layup method. Okay. So the next one is resin transfer molding. Okay. Okay. So in this method dry reinforcement fiber is held in a closed mold and then the resin is pumped through the model at high pressure. Okay, so this is a more time consuming process as it involves labor intensive preparation and preparation as well as the layup. But uh, uh, it has got many advantage that uh, the mold will be closed and uh, harmful emissions are been reduced and the void free laminate and the complex part can be created in this method. Okay, so now vacuum bonding. So now let's see how the vacuum bonding will be carried out. So in this method, uh, the composite is first placed over a mould, then a vacuum bay is placed over the top and then the air is removed from the vacuum and then air is removed from the vacuum which forces the bag down into the layup with a pressure of one bar okay the whole assembly is then placed into a oven to cure the resin and the material is produced in a relatively shorter time this is one of the major advantage of this method and this method is used in the conjunction with either filament vending or the layup technique. Now let's see the next method, the autoclave bonding. Okay, so the autoclave bonding. It is a pressure vessel. Okay, it's just like the uh, pressure cookers that we use, which controls the exact pressure, temperature, and the vacuum condition. So the technique is very similar to that of the vacuum bonding except that the oven is being replaced by the autoclave. Okay. Uh, the process takes much more uh, longer than the others and is relatively expensive. Now let's see what are the various advantages. Okay. 
So by utilizing these green composites, okay, we can reduce the cost of the material. As the materials are lightweight, they can be utilized in various structural components. And we have the flexibility of using these composites. At the same time, they are acoustic or I can say that it is sound insulating material and they are even sustainable in nature. Okay. Now let's see what are the disadvantages of the green composite. So they have got a reduced durability. Fine. Next, they are having a reduced fire resistance. At the same time, they have got a irregular fiber lens, which I told you while um, I was explaining you the uh, layup method. Okay, so where the unidirectional, bidirectional, multidirectional uh, fibers can be used, and these fibers won't be having a uh, regular dimension in them. Okay, one more important thing which you have to remember here is that these manufacturing processes depends upon the purpose of the manufacturing of the composite. Why am I preparing this composite? Whether it is for the structural element or whether it is a semi-structural element or whether it is a non-structural element. Okay. At the same time, it also becomes important that how the orientation of the fibers are being placed, whether it is a unidirectional, whether it is a bidirectional or the multidirectional, okay, or whether it is a sharp strand, okay, mat, right. So based upon the various orientation and based upon the uh, why the material is been manufactured or the process for which it is been used or construction process why it is been used we will be selecting a particular method which will be making the process easier okay okay now let's start with our next topic the water utilization and the low energy approach to water management in the building okay once when we are concentrating towards the green building, we are speaking about the conservation of the energy resources. There also comes the water which is a resource which have to be saved. So utilizing the water precisely at the same time reusing the material that is your water also becomes important with respect to the environment ecosystem at the same time with respect to the green building acceptability okay so now they we have got many methods through which the energy utilization can be lowered when i am going to use the water okay the first method of low energy approach towards the utilization of the water is the rain water harvesting. So you might have heard about the rain water harvesting from your secondary, right? So what happens? A building will be installed with the system which is going to have the collector at the same time where the water will be transferred at the same time where the water will be stored and then the water will be treated and then recirculated for the various purposes right so rain water harvesting is nothing but whatever the rain is being coming at that particular location you are going to collect that water from the roof of your house and the various outlets from where the rain water may be falling on that particular building and then getting out and then the same particular water will be stored and then it will be recycled to some extent by removing the floating materials uh, so by using the filters and then you can use the same water for the gardening purpose or for the uh, washing purpose or for the flushing purpose so washing your dishes or the cloth so for all the various purposes where the water can be utilized so obviously for the drinking also can be we can also use it for the drinking purpose if a proper filtration is been provided for a particular 
water okay because the underground whatever water whatever we are drinking is nothing but the water which is coming from the infiltration of the rain water okay so in the same way if you are going to have a various filter media and then the same water can be used as a potable water okay so the next method is your water metering obviously if for any service see for if any for any service if i am going to charge you you will obviously use that resource or thing precisely and you will always use it whenever it is required right so in that way if i am going to provide the metering for the water that i am going to utilize and if i am going to charge a particular amount for that meter obviously the usage of a water and simply wastage of the water will be reduced right so in most of the cities and in most of the urban areas we are seeing this water metering but still in most of the villages we don't have this method because of which the letting of the water is high okay the next method is water efficient taps so water efficient taps is nothing but we are just going to lowerize the quantity of water which is going to flow through that tap okay by maintaining by maintaining a particular velocity and a pressure so what happens at a greater pressure the amount of outlet of water is also more if i am going to stabilize it what happens the quantity of water which will be let out at a lower pressure will be minimum so what is happening if i am going to use the a water efficient taps what happens the amount of water which will be let out will be becoming constant at the same time even if i am opening the tap to a greater extent that is completely also the same quantity of water will be let out in that particular tap which will be conserving the amount of water right so and this technique is also utilized in our mit campus through our colleagues okay who are working on it and have reduced the water usage in a particular floor okay so the next method is pressure reducing valves okay so again so if i am going to reduce the pressure which is been generated in a particular tap by by various means obviously the pressure reducing valves are going to reduce the water which is going to be uh, wasted simply okay so pressure reducing valves are going to help the reduction or low utilization of the water by reducing the pressure which will be developed in a particular outlet by controlling it with the valves which we are going to install varying pressure okay so by closing the valve and by opening the valve i can match the pressure requirement of that particular floor and then the utilization of the water can be lowered by some extent the next one is water saving shower heads so obviously what happens instead of using a bucket or a mug in order to take a bath if i are going to use the water showers what happens we keep the shower on for all the time and then we take a bath right so what happens the large quantity of water gets wasted when we are going to use the water showers instead of the bucket and a mug in order to take a bath so in order to reduce the usage of the water even if a person is letting the shower for a longer duration of time for his bath his or her bath so what we can use the water saving shower heads can be utilized where the quantity of water which will be flowing through those showers will be minimized okay which will not be sent at a higher pressure and at a greater quantity right so the next one is the gray water recycling system okay so if i am going to reutilize the uh, water which is been let out through the various uh, household washings okay such as the uh, dish washing or such as your uh, washing up of the clothes okay so if i am going to recycle this water 
okay as the, as the gray water in the initial stage will not be highly polluted so this gray water which will be outleted from various uh, household uh, usages so what can we do we can recycle it and reuse it okay so for example the water which has been used for cleaning up of a floor okay the water which has been used for washing up of a utensils the water which has been used for cleaning up the cloths so if this water is been recycled and then reutilized for the flushing purpose or for the gardening purpose or for the washing purpose so what happens the amount of water which was been used first will be reduced so recycling up of the water will also help in lowering the energy conservation okay so how this gray water can be and we all know that whatever amount of waste which is been removed out from a house will contain maximum of 80% of water so if i am going to at least recycle the 50% of it obviously the next 50% of the water which i'll be using will be saved so i can conserve the water to a greater extent so the next technique or the next way to utilize the energy precisely or in order to lower the usage of the energy that is the water utilization is the smart flushing system so instead of using a flushing system like for a just for a one flush the huge quantity of discharge will be taking place right so instead of that if i am going to provide a double flush with a required moderate or a lower quantity of water as that of the first or one flush system what happens obviously the residues will be cleared easily and instead of flushing two times where the by using a large quantity of water for each individual flush by just using a double flush system the quantity of water will also be reduced at the same time what happens the amount of water which which was been used for the two flushes in a single flush system can also be reduced okay so now the next one is the smart irrigation system so smart irrigation system is like uh, what happens so in this smart irrigation system instead of using the flood irrigation okay or a ferro irrigation system or just by letting it is nothing but just letting the water to get flood and then irrigating a field if i am going to utilize the various irrigation systems such as using sprinklers or the drip irrigation obviously the amount of water which will be utilized will be reduced okay and the amount of water will be conserved why because once when you are letting the water uh, just like that for the floods we all know that the amount of water required for the uh, water okay will be minimum but the amount of water which is getting out to the environment like by heating up through the evaporation or transpiration process or it is just moving down into the ground which is not getting used up for the uh, irrigation purpose so by the plants okay so all these things can be reduced if i am going to provide water directly to the roots of the plants okay so these are the various methods through which the the various methods of low energy approach towards the water management in a building so these are the various methods where the energy can be utilized precisely and the water management in a building can be established or it can be acquired okay thank you